Let's go, Tiger. Tiger's sick of the moon. Come on, bring it on, Simba. Don't pack the lane. Over here, Simba. There'll be dead meat for the outside bomb. Let's he go. ain't dumb enough to bring it on in. Nobody's dumb here, cool. Just play the game. Open. Come on, man. I've been open for hours. They may call you Tiger, but I'm king of the jungle in here, pussy cat. Transition, let's do it. Okay, let's go, transition. What did I tell you, cool? Can the flapping lips. Break it up now. Come on now, break it up. That's it. If the showers, you are through for the night. He told me you saw it, Savage! Yeah, I didn't see nothing. Go get wet! You heard me. Hey, Savage, I saw the whole thing. You all right? Hey, hey! Yeah, I'm all right. Take it easy, man. Good. Up, now hit the bench. Come on, let's play some ball. ball. Any more fighting tonight and the lights go off? Come on, man. You know the deal. You were there last night. Oh, the fire? Yeah, the fire. Did they find out who caused it yet? No, man. And that's the problem, right? That's why I need you. Well, actually, I don't need you. What I really want is uh, the mantis. What? Come on, man. Don't roll down on me now, all right? Remember the rage thing at the hospital? I was dead in the middle of it, man. It was you. It was me. It was him. The mantis. Yeah, I also remember that you were out of it. I mean, that's why you were in the hospital, right? Come on, man. <laughs> Anytime anyone says anything bad about the bug, you get all defensive. Anytime the news reports say that he's been out doing his mantis thing, hey, you know where to be found. He only comes out at night. Don't you think maybe I'm at home in bed asleep? Which it sounds like is something you could use a little more of. How do you know he only comes out at night? <sighs> Come on, man, I'm not asking to be let in. I don't even want to be let in. I just need his help. All right, whatever. Assuming that I did know this, uh, bug thing, which I'm telling you, man, I don't. What is it that you would want me to ask him? Hey, fellas, what are you doing? We got a firefly to catch here. Firefly, as in Potamus Paralis of the family Lampyridae. No, firefly as in total psycho who likes to torch things. Garfield Heights Athletic Center. Boy, that's a crime. For years, they had the best pick up basketball games in the city. Where are the other fires? Same general area. It's the fourth fire in the last 12 months. 
All unsolved? That's the word. Uh, Miles, uh, I've come to an uneasy piece about the fact that my best friend has taken on the persona of a crime-fighting super insect. But we need to maintain some kind of selectivity, don't we? I suggest we let the arson investigators do what they're paid for. This is not a job for the Mantis. You're absolutely right, John. It isn't a job for the Mantis. It's a job for Miles Hawkins. Up early after your big night, I see. Miss Rochelle? It's too bad. What happened at the Athletic Center last night? What makes you think I know? I got a hold of the preliminary arson report. It said the fire started in the locker room. No incendiary device, no poor pattern, no trace of any accelerant. Cause undetermined at this time. Remember, Tiger, I know how it works and I know how you work. It was an accident, Justin, a mistake. While they rebuild, the center is temporarily relocating. Because of your mistake, Tiger. Relocating to the wharf area, my wharf area, and that's not where I want him to be. Justin, it was a mistake, Justin. What if you had been caught? Huh? What then? Think about the disaster, Tiger. The disaster for me, for you, and especially for your mom in there. Now, you come to the office tomorrow, all right? The Knicks are in town. It's been a while since we caught a game. All right? Ben. Mm -hmm. He's your mama's nurse now. And it's when mom's in the back. Tiger. We'll just put him down anywhere, guys. I'll Dick's room later. Uh, I'll be right with you. Just uh, grab a chair. Thanks. But I bring my own. Oh, dear me. Sometimes I amaze myself at how deep I can step into it. Denise Copeland, and I'm really sorry. Dr. Miles Hawkins, and don't be. I heard about the fire at the center. Yeah, well, it's an old building, and fortunately no one was hurt. So, welcome to Rescue City. Rescue City? Yeah. This place has been a dream of mine for a long time. This city is squeezed so tight when it comes to rescue shelters. Fortunately, we stumbled onto this place while we were looking for temporary quarters for the center. So every cloud does have a silver lining? Yeah, and every silver lining's got another damn cloud. The city's been in negotiations with the owner of this property to get us a lease agreement, but all we can afford is a dollar a month. Look, I know the work you do is important to the community, and I would hate to think a fire would jeopardize it. So, I was thinking of offering some sort of in-kind assistance. Maybe a matching grant? Yeah. A matching grant would be great. <laughs> I mean, I never believe in out-and-out -out charity anyway. I mean, it's like my mom used to say, you give a man a fish, he'll be hungry the next day. You teach that man to fish, he'll never go hungry again. My father said the same thing. Can I show you something? All right, all yeah, right, let's let's go. Go. Most of the kids here at the center are just boys on the verge of becoming men. Most of them have never had anything close to a full-time father. And today's schools are a poor substitute. Yes, you get the picture. Well, I'm flattered, Miss Copeland, but I'm not sure I'm the role model they're looking for. Denise, and you'd be surprised. What could I offer them? You were shot, weren't you, Dr. Hawkins? Yes. The mental adjustment of going from a healthy, abled man to being confined to a wheelchair must have been a very painful and difficult one. Yet look at you, the CEO of a leading technology company. Hey, guys, I want you to meet someone. This is Dr. Miles Hawkins. Hey, Dr. Hawkins. This is Bobby. Rick, how you doing? Henry, how you doing? that's Tiger. Woo. Take the shot. 
Dr. Miles Hawkins, do some surgery. Take a shot, Doc! Actually, I'm a biophysicist. I think you'll agree the figure is fair, Mr. Giddens. Yeah, it's fair. It's not the figure I have a problem with. It's the battle. I have a problem with your trying to break my lease. I'm still not interested. Don't be stupid, Giddens. That's a lot of money I'm offering you for a rundown dry cleaning business I hadn't seen a good day since Truman was president. Maybe. But that business has been in my family for 60 years, and I have a 99-year lease on it. You may own the land underneath, but I have a legal right to sit on it for the next 39 years, and I plan to live long enough to do just that. Councilman Torres is on the phone for you, Mr. Battle. It's his third call. He'd like to discuss leasing your boathouse property for this rescue city. No. I am not leasing nobody nothing. Hell, I'm already trying to buy back Gittin's damn lease. It's the only one that's still out. Will you please tell the councilman that I will call him back? Still have the ambient light problem? Yeah, I've doubled the bloody lumens on the projector output, but it uh, still washes out. Dr. Hawkins, there's a delivery for you. Yeah, right this way. Denise asked me to drop this off. I dropped it off. See. You. Thank you. Why don't you stick around for a moment? Look, man. I know what's up. I'm this. Mixed up kid from the street, and I'm here so you can do your big brother thing. Well, don't get too into it, because I ain't buying it. I'm not selling anything, Tiger. Whatever. Say hello to John Stormbreak and his hologram. John, this is Tiger Robinson. Tiger Robinson? That's a name to sink your teeth into. <laughs> hey, uh, do you know what a hologram is? Yeah. Yeah, I saw somebody once on TV. Uh -huh. Come on, take a closer look. All right. I got some time to kill. So how's it work? Badly at the moment. <laughs> Standard holograms work off of light wave patterns using a reference and a recorded beam. Our approach... This is, this is all yours. <laughs> Lock, stock, and mortgage. It's probably Denise at the center. Oh, there's a phone on my desk over there. Yeah, hello? Was that today? Well, I can't make it right now. I'm busy. What difference does it make what I'm doing? I can't come right... Yeah, you're all right. All right! Tiger! Hey, Tiger, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? We got a serious sauna thing happening here, Doc. Damn. I'm in a hot flash here. Maintenance is looking into the heating problem in this section, but so far everything checks out. Well, Mr. Happy is long gone, so what are you guys testing? A short. Something that would cause this phone to get hot. Well, how would a short do that? That's too little amperage. Well, then what would cause it to steam up like that? So what happened with Tiger? Not much. He came by, beeper went off, beeper was answered, and he left. I guess I should learn how not to dream for others. Thanks anyway, Miles. Wait a minute. Don't give up so easily, Denise. What else can you tell me about our Mr. Robinson? Not much, except 
He's got a passion for sports, and he's not the most outgoing, talkative kid in the world. Family? Not that he ever speaks of. I do have an address. The only reason I got this is because I threatened to ban him from the center if he didn't give it up. Ooh. Sometimes I teach by example. And sometimes you intimidate. <laughs> At least I mean well, though. Who is that? Justin Battle, the vulture. He's the guy that's trying to squeeze us out of this place. What do you suppose he needs with Tiger? I don't know. And I wish I did. Man, unbelievable. Triple overtime. I would say we got our money's worth. Yeah, but we gave the game away. No way Stark should went to the line that many times. Hey, that's the way to round ball bounces, brother. Patricia, please hold my calls. Yes, sir. Tiger, grab a seat, man. You know, I, I think I should be getting back. Miss Wyndham gets off in half an hour, and I don't want my mom to be there by herself. Hey, don't worry about that nurse, man. I pay her enough to take care of your mom. I appreciate it, Justin. So, uh, tell me about this Hawkins guy. It's nothing, man. Just Miss Copeland trying to find me a big brother, you know. <laughs> so Miss Copeland's running your life now, huh? No, man. No, I just do it just to make her happy. It ain't no big thing. You know, he's got some cool stuff in his office, though. That's, that's all his. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just wondering what this Big Brother game is all about. Well, maybe he's not running a game at all. You can't get to own a company like that, Tiger, without running games. Hawkins Technologies. You know, technology is what I used to use when I first started out as a kid. First matches and candles and then on to liquids, gasoline, alcohol. Even C4 with crystal timers is nothing but crude, unrefined technology. That's a Roberto Clemente. It's an autograph. You want it? Are you crazy? Yeah, I want it. First, I need to see if you've been practicing. Justin, I don't feel like doing it right now. You need to. Remember your little mistake? Remember the center? We'll sacrifice Steve Garvey for the cause. Steve Garvey for Roberto Clemente. That's right. Concentrate, Tiger. Now see the heat. Feel it growing inside of you. Now feel it trying to escape. Yes! 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 Control it, Tiger. Back off, Tiger! I'm trying! Back off! It's all right. It's all right, man. Okay. I got another one for you. Tonight? Yeah. Consider this one urban renewal. Geddon's dry cleaning factory. That's a real business. I thought we were just doing condemned buildings and things like that. You're not listening to me. What did I tell you about the buildings? They'll be replaced by low-income housing. That I'm putting up so that our people have a decent place to live, right? Yeah. Besides, I happen to know that old Geddon's wants the place burned anyway. To cash out on the insurance. Here's the address. Tiger, you forgot something. You realize how many favors it costs to crack open a juvie file? I'll balance the ledger by owing you one. You may owe me two, Miles Hawkins. Okay, let's see. Tiger Michael Robinson, order to appear before juvenile court, blah, blah, blah. Truancy assault, destruction of public property, all after the tender age of eight. Just your average red-blooded American pre-delinquent. What about family? What is it? A social worker's report attached to a police summary. What happened? A fire. Tiger lost his baby sister in a kitchen fire when he was four. 
His mother was Shell Robinson, had third degree burns over 70% of her body. She was in a coma for over a month, came out of it with extensive nerve damage. Where was Tiger? He was in the kitchen with his mother and sister and, get this, suffered only minor burns on his hands. There's a picture of the kitchen. Little Tiger's guardian angel was certainly watching over him that day. Anything on the father? Not much. He was a chief warrant officer in the army. His name was Cecil Robinson. Thanks. Hey, Tiger. How's it going? What are you doing here? Oh, I just came by to see if you want to go shoot some hoop. I, I can't. I'm busy. Too busy for me, but you've got time for someone like Justin Battle? You've been spying on me? No. I just happened to see you get into a car with him. Justin's a friend of mine. Is that okay with you? You can choose your friends, Tiger. Maybe I just thought you might have room for another one. Man, it's kind of funny. You, you uptown brothers, always get to feeling guilty about the old neighborhood. So you come down here, you spend some time with the poor people, you, you throw a little money around, then you run back uptown feeling a whole lot better. Is that what you think? Man, that's what I know! But see, check it. I ain't here for you. And I don't give a damn if you feel better or not. Now get out of my way. Ah! Tiger's address. Let me know if he's not in for the night. On my way. Don't do anything I would do. Okay, bite me. Sure. Find anything? Army personnel database. Chief Warrant Officer Cecil Robinson, VA Hospital number 411-60. Patient history. Chief Warrant Officer Cecil Robinson's UH-1B crashed in the Central Highlands carrying a full load of BD-7. Benzene-D-7 was an experimental chemical defoliant developed by the Army. Incredibly toxic. Now, when found two days later, C.W.O. Robinson was lying unconscious, drenched in the mixture. His crew was dead. Robinson's condition continued unstable, never responding to treatment. Prognosis terminal. Due to chromosome irregularities, he and Mrs. Robinson were counseled to not continue with the pregnancy, but continue to term. Well, that's when she must have been pregnant with Tiger. Cecil Robinson died on the 5th of January, 1983. Tiger must have been around five years old. Do you mind telling me what any of this means? It means there's a kid out there who, thanks to the US military, is an accident of nature. Followed our buddy to the old Gittins dry cleaning factory. He's not in his laundry. Get back here now. Yeah, yeah, but now.
Miles, what's going on? Miles! Inside. John, burning inside. Get out of there now. The exoskeleton wasn't designed to take this. Psychogenesis, John. Not only did I see it with my own eyes, I felt it. The kid? Yes. He simply willed objects to immolate by fire. The mechanics are probably based on molecular fibrillation. The oscillation of molecules brought to such an intense vibration, they simply overheat. Yeah, you don't really believe that. John, it's done with microwave ovens, for God's sakes. Yes, you put a lasagna in and you turn on a switch. You turn on a switch. You don't just think about zapping it. This simply is not possible. Oh, not possible. Quarks were known to be theoretically possible for years, but only recently proven. Not to mention how bumblebees fly. Yeah, but these things have a scientific model, a mathematical basis. How many exoskeletons exist in the world, John? Or chrysalids? We're doing what modern science would consider impossible. I know. I know. But this is a kid. Yes. A very troubled kid. No. A very dangerous kid, and I think we should call the police. And tell them what? He starts fire psychically? You're having a hard enough time believing it yourself. Well, why would a very troubled, very dangerous kid burn out an old dry cleaning plant? That's a question only Tiger could answer. Well, good luck in finding him. If he's like your average arsonist, I may not need that much luck. If what you're saying about him is right, there's not very much about Tiger that's average at all. We're both breaking the law by being here. What do you want? I want you to stop. I don't know what you're talking about. The fires. So far you've been lucky no one's been hurt or killed. But one day your luck will run out. I checked your family's history. There was an accident. It wasn't your fault, Tiger, but you're a danger. You're a fire starter. No. No, no. Only buildings and things. No people. I don't burn people. Oh, but you will, one way or another. And one day, when you get tired of burning things, there'll be nothing left to destroy but yourself. You, you think I, I wanted to do this? You think I like doing this? Then why did you do it? I had to. For whom? It'll be better here. People will be happier. Tiger, how does destruction make people happier? I want to report an arson. And you are? Spiro Giddens. Giddens dry cleaning and laundry. Did you see the fire set? No, but I know who did it. That worm, Battle, Justin Battle. 
And exactly what did this Mr. Battle burn? My business. I wouldn't give up my lease, so he burned me out. Yeah? This is Lieutenant Maxwell and SI. Get me somebody in bomb and arson. Jones. Yeah. Hi, Earl. Do we have a prelim on the dry cleaning fire? A hold. Without an eyewitness, Mr. Gittins, it's real difficult to get an arson conviction. Don't talk to me about difficult. Yeah, I'm here. There is no evidence of arson. You sure? Positive. Thanks. So far, investigators have no evidence of arson, Mr. Gittins. He did it. I know he did it. The file's not closed, Mr. Gittins. If anything else turns up, we'll be sure to let you know. No, no, no. I don't want to move again. This is the ideal space for us. We've got to get him to sign, Councilman. I start bringing residents in here tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. Make sure we've got enough pillows and blankets for those cots and see if you can scrounge up a dozen more heaters. Planning the D-Day invasion had to have been easier than this. And they had an army of help. Rescue City. Mr. Battle, the city has been trying to get in touch with you. I don't know what there is for us to talk about. Any negotiations regarding this property and Rescue City have got to be taken up with the city. They're trying to work it out. Meet him. Why? I don't have anything to say to this guy. He should be dealing with the city. He does own the property. Meet me here at 6 o'clock. Now, why am I meeting this slug? It never hurts to listen, right? My father said that, too. Give up. Which way to the director's office? You battle? Yeah. It's right in there. Man, I gotta check this out. See, now this is an awesome set of wheels. Where are you going? I'll be right back. We'll leave the ball. I'll be right back. Yeah, we're getting a good signal. As long as he doesn't dribble the ball. Oops. Uh, excuse me, pardon. So what is it, Mr. Battle? What's so important? Well, first of all, I'd like to say how much I admire what you're trying to do here. I Spare think... the grease. I don't have time. Okay, Miss Copeland. Let me lay it out for you. I have plans for this property. Plans that never included your Rescue City project. Plans that if delayed too much, could cost me millions. So? So I want to make it worth your while to abandon the site as soon as possible. I'm prepared to make a nice cash donation. Not interested. How much? I'm not interested. I have 200 people coming in here tomorrow and 300 the day after that. It'll never happen. Is that a threat, Mr. Battle? I don't make threats. I'm just a businessman trying to protect his interests, Miss Copeland. Have a good day. Shall we hazard a guess as to what interest it is he's protecting? Not sure, but I think we've got a pretty good idea how and when he'll be protecting it. This is not a problem, damn it. I promise you we'll stay on schedule. Rescue City will not happen. That place will burn tonight. We'll start construction next week once we clear away the mess. I guarantee it.
Patricia. Yes, sir? Have Tiger meet me out front. Then call Kurt and tell him it's on. Yes, sir. doing here? It's the big leagues, Tiger. You want me to burn down Rescue City? Why not? There's nobody in there. Just blankets and cots and things. It'll be the easiest one yet. Come on. No. Tiger. I said no. I'm not doing it anymore. And if I was, I sure wouldn't do this place. Look, you can burn it tonight while it's empty, or I burn it tomorrow when it's filled with people. It's your choice. He wouldn't do that. Not only will I do it, I'll make sure that you're fingered for it. And every other unsolved fire in this city. And guess what'll happen when they find out how you do it, Tiger? You ever seen a frog dissected? You were just playing me, weren't you? Low-income housing? Helping people? Not really playing, you know. Just misdirection. I am developing this property. But Pier 71 will make me tens of millions more than some low-rent housing project. Pier 71? The model in your office? Yeah. The model of Port Columbia. See, all of this will be expensive shops, galleries, restaurants. And I have you to thank for making it all possible. Without your gift, it would take me years to cut through all that bureaucratic red tape. I trusted you, Justin. And for good reason. Didn't I take care of things, man? Private nurse for your mother. Specialist, medicine, food, rent. If it wasn't for me, man, you'd be living on the county. And as for your mother? Mom? Your mom would never have had the strength to enjoy such a pleasant drive on such a pleasant evening. Now, what's it gonna be, Tiger? Rescue City or Rescue Mom? You're ready to go. What about her? What about her? Dump her. D. I'll take care of the kid. Let's go. The hell? Kurt! What the hell's going on, man? Kurt! Hey, come on, man. Come on, man. You, you know I would never do nothing to hurt your mother, man. You know that, right? Tiger, come on, man. We like family. Tiger. Come on, Tiger. Tiger. Come on, man! We're not about this, Tiger! Come on, it's me, man! You 
lied to me. I made you, man. I made you. You needed me. You were freaking. You needed me, man. Don't destroy. Don't throw it away, Tiger. Don't do this, man. It is you who destroys battle. You who now deserve to suffer. But not this way. He used me. You let yourself be used. He lied to me. No more. So what will you do? Kill him? Do that and you become him. Fear, anger, and lies. That's all battle taught you. Fight them. And he loses. Give in by becoming him and he wins. No. He won't win. He won't. Here's John and Miles now. Hello, ladies. Tiger confessed to the fire. We've got Battle in custody, and Tiger's gonna testify against him. Now that should help lighten the sentence, right? Well, it depends on the judge, but nobody thinks arson's a good thing. But there was no loss of life in any of the fires. I agree. We'll do everything we can to help him. Thanks for doing all you did, Lieutenant. That's all we can do. And definitely good luck with Rescue City. Thanks. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Well, you know, I must say it's looking Miles, pretty good in there. I almost forgot. Tiger wanted you to have this. Thanks, Leo. See you. Excuse me. <laughs> this is amazing. There's so much I can do now. Spending money, eh? New beds. Hey, Dr. Hawkins. I'm not good at writing letters, you understand, but Mom and I both thought it'd be a good idea. I just want to say that I'm real sorry for how things turned out. I'm gonna do what you said and work on controlling my gift. Hey, if I burn things down with my mind, maybe I could build some things up, too. Do you think if I use my mind to sink a 30-foot, it'd be okay, or would that be cheating? Maybe when I get out, we could shoot some hoops and talk about it. Okay? Bye, Dr. Hawkins. Heads up. Come on, man, keep the shot. Keep the shot. Come on, man, keep it going, Reg. You can do it, you can do it, don't worry, Reg.